April 1868. The cherry blossoms floating in the wind would find their resting place in the ground beneath us. Etta was undergoing a changing of the guard. The Supreme Commander, Lord Iyasu Takagawa, was the last in a line of succession that held dominion over Edo and its castle for over 300 years. What was once a prosperous bastion had become an olive branch, offered by the fading Takagawa remnants as a token of surrender to the Imperial Army. For the townspeople of Edo, all that mattered to them was that they were untouched by the kiss of war. To the Shinsengumi, however, the surrender was a slap in the face. Their sacrifices and toils were wantonly discarded so the shogunate could save its own skin. As for Yamazaki and myself, we weren't quite sure of what to make out of the situation. Because the Imperial Army's march hadn't resulted in an all-out battle, the Fury Corps wasn't thrusted into another needless conflict just to hold Edo Castle. As the two of us awaited news from the war front, we decided to remain in Edo, cautiously inspecting the incoming troops for any signs of malfeasance. It only took ten days for us to receive the news. Kondo? Yeah. Kondo's been captured by the Imperial Army?! Hearing the news knocked the wind out of me, and my legs buckled so quickly that I thought I'd faint. It's true. The Shinsengumi soldiers were pinned at the mouth of Nagareyama, and Chief Kondo offered to surrender to buy the other men time to escape. His punishment has been scheduled. In the near future, he is to be beheaded at the Itabashi grounds. Yamazaki bit into his lips, quivering as he stood up and began nervously pacing around the room. All of a sudden, he snapped his fingers as if he figured out some kind of solution. Where are you going? Isn't it obvious? I'm going to rescue the chief. But this is a clear trap! They're trying to lure the Shinsengumi from out of hiding! Let me get this straight. You suggest that we should just sit here and wait until they decapitate him? Well... Sorry, but this cannot wait. I appreciate your concern. But nonetheless... Duty beckons me. I serve as the Shinsengumi shadow. If its light is extinguished, as does its shadow. Then let me accompany you. I might not have known him as well as you, but there's no way I can abandon Kondo. Dang. And this is a new background too, Bamboo Forest. We traveled to a forest of bamboo, where soft moonlight flashed through tall bamboo stalks in brief rhythmic sconces. Yeah, that was sconces. I'm like, did I say that right? Horses with imperial insignias were tied to a post beside the Itabashi Inn, signifying that we'd arrived. Yamazaki and I ducked low to the ground, scoping the encampment for any sign of Kondo. It's quiet. Almost eerily so. I don't see anyone around us. I'm getting the creeps. If Itabashi was supposedly housing an entire army, then the complete lack of noise was disconcerting. Considering their prisoner was the Shinsengumi's chief, arguably one of the highest profile officers they could have arrested, no one was standing guard. This is almost certainly a trap. Be on your guard. We have to carefully find a way to infiltrate it. Okay, but I'm not sure whom they're trying to trap. Is it our demon boys? It is not nearly as complicated as you make it out to be. Oh. It's Furies. If our prey were feisty, difficult to tame, then perhaps laying a more intricate trap would have been necessary, but... What need have we for a trap when our prey is attracted to the scent of fresh bait so willingly? Oh, it was Dad. I thought the Furies were talking. <laughs> now I'm like, it wouldn't still be question marks though if it was a Fury. Okay, Dad. I'm redoing your lines post-editing. <laughs> Father? There he stood, his bald head glistening brightly under the moonlight. After four years of searching. 
my father, Kodo Yukimura. It has been quite some time, Chizuru. You have blossomed into a beautiful young woman since last we spoke. For a second, I could have sworn that time froze, save for a kind, familiar grin appearing on Father's face. It was as if I were transported to a previous time, a child in front of her father basking in his warm glow. But it was merely the ghost of a thought. I had to remember myself to stop from sprinting up to him and wrapping my arms around his body. But he was here. Father had a malicious glint in his eye, resembling the look of a man who'd committed the sins for which he had been notoriously accused. On both sides of him stood his cohort of Furies, their eyes too glowing in the darkness. I held on to a thread of hope, sealing myself from letting my voice tremble as I called out to him. Father, why are you doing all of this? Why are there Furies with you? Surely Kazuma's omen was a misunderstanding. There was no way that Kazuma could have known Father's intentions, so perhaps he was mistaken. The man in front of me, my beloved Father, wasn't capable of committing atrocities against mankind. I hoped, against all hope, that he would assure me, first with his eyes, then with his eloquent words. My heart, sadly, was too far from the mark. Furies, you say? Ah, it appears that your tenure with the Shinsengumi has taught you many things. Father nodded, grinning wryly. Father, what's the meaning in all of this? Hmm? Isn't it obvious? I'm working towards building a bigger, brighter, more ideal future for this country. The more information I gather about these wretched Westerners, the more I pity our country's people. Westerners are nothing more than locusts. Soon our country will succumb to their vicious swarms, just as our neighbors south and west of us have. For this reason, I have taken it upon myself to rebuild and defend this glorious nation. Defend it, you say? So by turning innocent people into furies, you're defending it. You're infecting your people with an unquenchable thirst for blood. They become monsters that won't stop at killing their families, friends, or loved ones. You aren't saving our country. You're throwing it to the wolves. Why? Why are you cursing us? Why, father? The father I knew would never do such a horrid thing. Everything I knew, I learned from you. What about your patients? You cared for them, and they loved you. Each and every time I drew a fever, you were there by my bedside, staying up all night. Stay up all night? Ah, oh, yes. Of course I remember. His lips curled into a genial smile. The warm, soothing bellow of his voice sank my heart. Drifting carelessly into slumber would have prevented me from observing the effects of the medicine I administered. What? You see, fury powers are impressive, but they pale in comparison to what demons are truly capable of. If medicine is my art, then your body is a precious canvas, and a curious mind cannot help but create. You, my child, possess an impressive body. I injected a dose of poison that could kill lesser beings, but you emerged unscathed. Curious indeed. No way! Really? Okay! Well, this is interesting. Because all this time, I'm like, has there been any precedent to Dad? You know, is he just like, Waha, I'm evil because... <laughs> um, I mean, we have had flashbacks of him basically vowing vengeance against humans. Um, when she was very little. But then by all accounts, he became a doctor, was really caring to the people in the village, plus um, his adopted daughter, and then went back to this evil scheme of his, which I presumed before was exacerbated by him taking the water of life and it slowly melting away at his sanity. But this... 
this new information <laughs> sounds like he's been experimenting on her for her entire life. <laughs> Dang. Okay. I'll put that in my information pile. Dose of poison? You... you're lying. I replayed the words in my head, refusing to accept them as they were. A horrifying, chilling reality. My mind was rattled by the cognitive dissonance. How could a voice so sweet tell a truth so sour? I have developed a new kind of fury. One that can withstand the searing rays of sunlight. But with you, we can take my research to heights unknown. If we could harness the properties of your blood, then we could produce the water of life en masse. Chizuru, I have groomed you for this sole purpose, and the time has come to reap my harvest. Okay, so she is directly connected to this whole research with the water of life. And while the, the key ingredient is actually vampire blood from the West... He kept her specifically to improve the serum over time. So he was nice to her for the sole purpose of getting her to trust him so that he could use her for his experiment later. Man, he played the long game. <laughs> but tricks on him because he actually ended up caring for her in a weird way <laughs> anyway. He has saved us in the past, but... Oof. I'm loving all this new info. I hadn't anticipated you to escape from Meadow, but... All that matters now is that you're here, and that we can resume my research where it had been left off. Enough. Shut your fucking mouth, Koto Yukimura. Dang, go Bean! Thank you. Ah, uh, Yamazaki. Where are my manners? Thank you for safely escorting my daughter back to me. I expected to summon the Shinsengumi with rumors of Kondo's execution like bees to fresh pollen. To see that only one of them fluttered into my midst. Well, perhaps I overestimated the Shinsengumi. Ah, oh, so it was a trap. I should have known all along. Mind your tongue, boy. This was no trap. Kondo is, in fact, within this very encampment. So, with that out of the way, allow me to pose you a question. What are you here for, Yamazaki? Stupid question. Dang! Gah! Release Chief Kondo at once. If you interfere, then I will kill you myself. Can Dad and Yamazaki get into a throwing match? <laughs> Scalpel against Kunai. Who will win? With that, Yamazaki hurled a Kunai at lightning speed towards Father, prompting one of his Fury minions to dive in the path of the knife, killing it. Father, however, hadn't even broken a sweat, nor had his smug smile left his face. Why must everyone sully the sentimental reunion between a loving father and his daughter? You would do well to learn your place, boy. If you release the chief peacefully, then maybe I'll allow you to speak with her. Oh, we both know that isn't going to happen. I have some debts owed to the Imperial Army, too. I was given instructions to use Kondo's name as a ploy to draw the Shinsengumi. Which I suppose is easier than luring you with his head on a pike. I've heard enough. You're mine! As Yamazaki kicked into a sprint, a crowd of furies moved towards him, salivating at the mouth. Oh, he's changed already. Child's play! I'll murder you all! Father watched Yamazaki plea through the Furies with thinned eyes, stroking his chin absentmindedly. Oh, interesting. Very interesting. Tell me, 
In the time since my departure from the Shinsengumi, have they worked towards improving the water of life, or is this one an anomaly? Pardon me if I sound presumptive, but it's rare to see a fury's speed so deftly enhanced. However... Alright. He's transforming. Father? Y you are changing! Behold, this is the true image of a demon. Only with the power of the water of life have I achieved such a marvelous form. Alright, here we go. Father slid his hand into his pockets, clutching a fistful of scalpels before flinging them into the fray. Yamazaki! What the- Your own tactic against you. Ah! He killed his own furies? Oh, I guess it was just collateral damage. The scalpels rained upon the horde of warriors, hitting not only Yamazaki, but all of the surrounding furies as well. All of these soldiers are just collateral to you, eh? Taking advantage of their healing abilities. But little do you know, it won't kill me either. What's a little stab wound here or there? <laughs> Unfortunately, my friend, you are mistaken. Ah! Ah! Silver. Suddenly, the furies around Yamazaki collapsed to the floor, moaning and writhing in agony. Their eyes bulged, blood trickling slowly from their sockets and nostrils in a morbid scene. What? Why aren't their wounds recovering? My face drained of color as I glanced over at Yamazaki. What the hell did you do to me? Stab wounds from the scalpels tattered Yamazaki's thin arms and legs and he dropped to his knees. Hurts, doesn't it? For furies, there is no recovery from this poison, so don't even bother trying. Father shot a quick, smug look at Yamazaki, then he shifted his line of sight towards me. A menacing glow radiated beneath, behind his familiar eyes. Summoning chills that crawled along the length of my spine. Now, Chizuru. In spite of the circumstances, I'm glad we could chat. Improving my serum and expanding my army of furies requires the blood of a pure-blooded demon. What do you want from me? Fret not. In fact, you won't have to do a thing. You won't even have to think. All that I require is your blood, enough not to kill you. As you know, furies find the taste of blood absolutely indelible. You... you bastard. Your own daughter. Do you even know what you're asking? Of course, but progress requires sacrifice. One that I have been cultivating for years now. With luck, Furies will no longer fear sunlight and, with their enhanced abilities, can surpass demons. In other words, Chizuru, you shall become the mother of Furies. What a wonderful honor. Th there is no way. Ah, how could I forget? We could use a man of your medical expertise, Yamazaki. Care to join our cause? As my assistant, you'd only need to extract Chizuru's blood each day, and we could even call you Doctor. It's an enticing offer, I know. Dang. <laughs> this guy. What? What the hell? Yamazaki screamed passionately at the top of his lungs, attempting to lift his body from the ground. Go! Before Yamazaki could stand, Father kicked him back down then pressed his foot on a scalpel lodged in Yamazaki's abdomen deeper into the flesh. Father, stop! I will only stop if you honor my request, my child. But I know you. Always the model daughter. You'll help me achieve my dreams, won't you? The intense pressure of Father's weight caused Yamazaki's wounds to gush heavily with blood. Ugh. I wanted nothing more than to reject Father's appalling request, but... 
If he were to keep things like this, Yamazaki would surely have bled to death. Oh, okay. I was shaking violently with rage, and just as I was about to give in out of desperation. Hmm. Green? Who do I know who's green? Shin's green? I think Sanon is also green. Let's find out! A blood-curdling scream echoed from somewhere behind us, and I glanced backwards at a reflex. Who the hell are you? Ah! What? What's happening? I I don't know, sir. Someone's picking off our troops one after the other. What? What the hell? I don't see him anywhere. Ah! As the Fury had said, something was lurking in the shadows, carving through their flesh and bones like a butcher through swine. Few individuals were aware of how to kill Furies outright, let alone accomplish the deed successfully. If the Shinsengumi men were already in Aizu, then whoever could it be? It depends if the Furies have left or not the Shinsengumi by this point. Because Shin and Harada are definitely gone, so it could be Shin. Gah! The attacker silhouette came within view. Who, who are you? The impenetrable wall of furies had crumbled. <laughs> They're really dragging this out, man. Scattered along the floor were the ghoulish remains of flayed limbs soaking up rich puddles of blood. Oh my god! Is it my boy? Soji, is that you? If this is Soji, I'm gonna cry happy tears. The sword of the Shinsengumi. Something remarkable happened. A vision, cutting like light through darkness, clad in a sky blue howry. Ah! <laughs> yes! Yes! Soji! Oh, this is the best twist ever in this route. Oh, my boy, I'm so happy to see you. Does that mean you're a fury now, though, or what? This is like your last stand? I need- I have so many questions. Whatever, let's do this! Soji Okita, captain of the Shinsengumi's first division. Okita! Wh why What are you doing here? Aw, oh, seen better days, haven't you? To think, you used to call yourself a Shinsengumi man, Yamazaki. No need to waste my breath. There's only one reason I drag myself out to this dump. He came for Kondo. Oh my god. It's been a while, Kodo. I'll spell this out for you. If you hand Kondo over to me, then I'll spare you the gruesome fate suffered by your little minions. Okito shot a cold glare at Father from a distance, anticipating himself to lunge quickly on command. His eyes dripped with a hateful aggression. <laughs> Life is full of surprises. Another rat here to spoil the fun. Spare me your breath, Okita. I've heard all about your illness. It's fatal and the clock is ticking. In fact, I'd sooner get you a chair than your chief. How did you travel here? Can you even stand? Okita remained silent. His cheeks were pale and gaunt, and his clothes were loose over his delicate body. It was clear that his condition had worsened. I grew anxious, hoping he wouldn't faint. Beats me. Instead of asking me, you should shut that blabbermouth of yours and find out yourself. Okay. Attack! Father raised his hand, signaling a gang of furies encircling our group to lunge for Okita. 
One thing Okita hadn't lost was his swagger, and he fearlessly walked towards the rushing horde, letting his sword screech as he dragged it along the floor. Only when the Furies were a split second from crashing into him had Okita raised his sword, piercing into one's chest with impeccable precision. He then maneuvered his sword as a fulcrum, using his foe's lifeless body to propel his momentum forward. In one swift movement, he twisted the blade out of the Fury's body and slashed at the next incoming Fury, decapitating its head cleanly from its body. The resulting force knocked Okita square on his back, but he had enough muscle memory to roll out of the way, dodging the bloody stampede. Man, Soji is such a beast. His body was filthy with blood and dirt. Soon he launched into an astonishing display of technique, bouncing between Furies like his sword was guiding his movements. One by one, the Furies fell victim to his graceful destruction, ribbons of blood splashing in the air. He persevered, spurned by his mission to save Kondo. This cannot be. How can you still fight? You're growing senile, old man. Look at me. My fucking arms and legs could be ripped from my body. And that'd still be a pathetic excuse not to risk my goddamn life to save condos. You bastard! Takes one to know one. Oh, and by the way, your new furies. They're shit. Same old shit. My lungs are working at less than quarter strength, and they're still more useless in battle than her. <laughs> I don't even care that insult was at my expense. I approve. Without missing a beat, Okita slashed his blade into an enemy fury's head, tearing its face asunder and exposing brain and teeth with his blade's sharp edge. Ooh. Why are you just standing there, Chizuru? Hurry up and grab Yamazaki and run! Y you expect me to leave you here, Okita? So, you think I need Yamazaki, who can't even move to help me? Or you? Fat chance. Honestly, you're just in my way. Okita coldly dismissed my concern, turning his back towards us before addressing me softly. Listen closely, Chizuru, and listen well. Okita spoke candidly with his usual sardonic tone, but his cocksure attitude was a front and his eyes dripped with melancholy. He cleared his throat, shifting his line of sight. <clears throat> If I couldn't learn to see through Okita's veneer and accept a sincere sentiment when he offered it, then I would disrespecting I would be disrespecting the sacrifice. Okita, may the fortunes of war rest in your favor. Thanks, kid. That's more like it. I bit my lip to the point of breaking the skin. I lifted Yamazaki up, letting him rest on my back, and began to walk as I heard Okita's voice behind me. Can't wait to see you, Kondo. If I kill every one of these bastards and reach him in time, would he be proud of me? Soji. Soji. He loves you. You don't have to kill everyone. Murder puppy. Oh my gosh, that was amazing. Everything after leaving Okita was a blur. With Yamazaki on my back, I sprinted through the forest, fighting the urge to collapse from exhaustion. I had no idea where to go or how long to run. <sighs> Fatigue tightened my calf muscles as if my body were crying out to me in a desperate plea to stop. I grew dizzy to the point that my vision was swirling, hues of black and red clouding my sight. Suddenly, we toppled to the ground, slamming into the mountainous terrain as a breeze grazed our cheeks. No, we must go further. No matter how many times I repeated the thought to myself, I couldn't will myself to lift my body from the ground. How well? 
Then I heard footsteps, foot, footsteps, footsteps tapping somewhere in the close distance, and my eyelids drooped, slinking my consciousness into darkness. <laughs>